let's go on to take a look at adequate sleep. Now you see on the chart there it says seven to eight hours. Well, a good night's sleep means a healthy and a disease-free brain. The difference between getting six hours of sleep instead of eight hours is 50% more cortisol in the bloodstream. Now, the brain is very busy at night. Cerebral spinal fluid is pumped more quickly throughout the brain while we sleep. It acts, if you want to think about it, like a dishwasher. It whisks away the waste products that the brain cells have made during the day. Researchers from the University of California in Berkeley were looking at brain scans and saw that a loss of sleep caused a buildup of a garbage protein in the brain, one that directly impacts cognition. Those who get a good night's sleep easily get rid of the protein. It's sticky in nature and it builds up over time. Well, I have two basic recommendations here. First of all, for yourself as a caregiver, if it's at all possible, budget a pre-sleep period of time of just signing off before going to bed. In other words, take about a good half hour just to read a book, watch TV news, or reflect on those golden moments of the day. But don't ruminate. Practice what I call thought stopping. Imagine a large chest in front of you where you put and dump all your worries in the chest before you go to bed that night. Take an imaginary key, lock the chest with that key, and tell yourself you're going to open it in the morning, and now you're just going to get a good night rest. And know that those worries are going to be there in the morning when you get up. But at least stop your thoughts and try to just think positively. The second suggestion is that the Journal of Neuroscience recommends that the optimal sleeping position for brain health is sleeping on the side for the brain to clear out that waste that I was talking about and those harmful chemicals and waste products that build up while we're awake.